how much does race factor into the enemy not landing a head coaching job? Key, I'll give you my two cents. Um, I think we will be the first show, I, I'm speaking on my behalf, um, that I would call something out if I saw it. And I think there is a problem, obviously, with African-American head coaches in the NFL. That is a problem. But to me, it, this doesn't feel like a racial thing with Eric B. Enemy, Key. It feels like there's something else or there's something more because the resume itself is off the charts. Like, it, that resume is off the charts. So when you keep hearing his name involved in conversations year after year after year, you start having conversations about, like, well, what's actually going on internally? Like, does he need to do it away from Andy Reid? It doesn't feel like a race thing to me. I'll be the first to call something out when I see it, but this, to me, feels like there's something deeper and more with Eric ben me that goes beyond race, that goes more towards his character that people are questioning. That, to me, seems to be the awkwardness with this. Am I off or am I – tell you me think? if I'm off. No, no, you, you, you're having a conversation. You're not, you're not off. Um, it, it is a very difficult situation to understand – um, when I know Eric personally, so I kind of know him. It, I, if you asked me this two years ago, if if race played a part, I probably would have said, yeah. Probably would have said, yeah, yeah they're not. They tripping. These people are, are tripping. But they have hired. Not the entire 32 teams because it hasn't been openings, but there have been a handful of teams here and there that have hired a black head coach. Certain organizations. And then there are certain organizations that ain't going to never hire one. Let's just call it what it is. And he may have interviewed with those organizations in the past that just they're not going to hire one. So that would be race in those cases. Well, it, it, they're just not going to hire one. Right, but, but the whole thing, but the race. whole thing, but the whole thing, Max, as a whole, I can't say that the hiring cycle mm -hmm. has major racial components to it because every single team does not have an opening. So I don't know. For instance, I'm just throwing out a team. Uh, the the backyard sliders, they may not have. They may have an opening. And they may interview a lot of different minority candidates over time, over time, but they've never, ever hired a black head coach. So my antennas would certainly go up to that organization. I can't feel that way about the Indianapolis Colts because they had two African-American coaches in the past in the great Hall of Famer, Tony Dungy, and Coach Caldwell, Jim Caldwell. So I can't the key, I'd like scream to, that. I'd like to address I can't scream that about Houston either. I'd like to address that real quick. I have another point I want to make, but real quick. <laughs> if black people are at the point where you just have to accept, well, look, that team's just not going to hire a black head coach. It's the way they are. So, so, therefore, I kind of take that out of the racial conversation. That is ridiculous. That is the racial I take, conversation. I take, it, I take it out of the conversation. You don't just accept that. I take it out of the conversation. I'm never going to accept it. Right. I'm black, Max, so I ain't going to never accept it. I am a black man, but, but I also you're understand that reality. But, but that I that's understand how they are. the reality of who the hell they are. Right. They're so, not going to do so it. So therefore, right. So therefore, so that is racial. That's the, I just I'm just going to leave. I don't even waste my time on stuff okay. like that. Here's the as other. far as the enemy goes, though, Jay, I don't know and I don't understand why he can't get hired because it can't be about interviewing bad. There's no bad interviews. Okay. What's a bad interview? You want me to get up there in in fake it, or you want me to be myself and authentic like I've been as an offensive coordinator? Matt Nagy hot, got hired as a head coach under mm -hmm. Andy Reid, and so did Doug Peterson mm -hmm. under Andy Reid. And yep. neither one of them, neither one at all whatsoever, called plays at the level that Eric Bieniemy did. That's Eric Bieniemy yeah. shared play calling duties with Andy Reid. At times, Andy Reid called plays. Eric Bieniemy called plays. Eric Bieniemy installed. Andy Reid installed. So they shared responsibilities. Whatever it is that's out there about EB, 
we don't know. But we can't keep running to the black thing, the black thing, the black I, thing, I, I the agree. black thing. Can't keep doing that. I hear Because what... at some point, they going to keep hiring black coaches, just not in an alarming rate, like they hire white coaches. And we want to see more blacks hired. It ain't just about Eric Bieniemy. period. It may be something else. And when you see what's going on with the enemy, you go, man, maybe there's something more there. But I think the test in these cases is always you have to imagine he's white. You know, you could even see sometimes there's footage of, you know, poli- a, a police interaction with someone. And it, it, it's police brutality, really, is what's going on. And it's a black cop. And people say, oh, it's a black cop. Yeah, but, but the question is, would the cop, whether they're black or white, treat the civilian as though they are white, right? Like what, but it's still it's a black person that's happening to. If they were white, whether or not it's a black cop, would they be treated the same way? So it's all, it's all like, I, I think of the movie A Time to Kill. Remember A Time to Kill with Sam Jackson? Where he's the, you know, he hires Matthew McConaughey because he wants, because Matthew McConaughey's white and he can get into the heads of the jury. He has to hit him in the heart. You're not going to win on the, on the facts because he, you know, avenged the, 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 death of his daughter by killing the guy who did it and everything and and so so McConaughey has the jury close their eyes and takes them through the whole gruesome crime and then and you're like yeah but they've already gone over the facts of the case it's still not an excuse he can't kill the guy by law but at the end McConaughey says now I want you to imagine their that that the victim the girl is white and the jury all look shocked when they open their eyes and of course they get they let him off you have to imagine in this case that the enemy is white not just is there more to it. Do you think a white offensive coordinator who's not an old man for a, coach, for, for a team like this, whose offense is this good, whose head coach constantly gives him credit for the offense, would not land a head coaching job? And if the answer is yes, then I think in your own mind, you can say, okay, this is not about race. But if the answer is no, then I don't think you can separate it. That's my it, view. It, 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 but but in, in your view, there's nothing wrong with your view, Max. It's two guys in Matt Nagy and Doug Peterson who was not calling plays for the Kansas City Chiefs in winning Super Bowls that got head coaching jobs, right? Mm-hmm. This is not anything new in the National Football League when it comes to black head coach, a black coordinator, so to speak, with titles, and you may not remember it, and I know Jay certainly don't because it was a while ago and Jay was busy playing basketball at Duke. But Sherman Lewis and Ray Rhodes uh, was under Mike Holmgren, but Mike Holmgren was calling the offense, and Sherm had the, the responsibilities of the install, and he had the respons- and he had the title as offensive coordinator. He never, ever got a head coaching job. Ray Rhodes actually called the defense and wind up getting – head coaching jobs, both in Philadelphia and then back in Green Bay. And the reason that I bring that up is because they, one did and one didn't. And in this instance, some would argue that Eric Bieniemy does not call the plays. He doesn't call them 100% of the time, and Andy Reid has said that. But when you have the telecast and the broadcasters on TV constantly referring to what a great play call by Andy Reid, not even knowing if it was Eric Bieniemy actually making that play call at that particular time and painting the cameras of the direction of the director to Andy Reid when they scored a touchdown opposed to giving Eric Bieniemy the credit, it waters down who Eric Bieniemy is in the eyes of these owners and these general managers because they are human, and they listen to all this stuff too. Now, when we start talking about racial components, Jay, again, there have been black hair coaches hired by the organizations that Eric interviewed for. So I think it's more of he's black, he's not calling plays, and there's something else that we don't know about because there's no way that he could continue to have this success under Andy Reid and not get a damn job. It just doesn't make any sense. Zero sense. Yeah, so I'm with you, Key. It doesn't make any sense to me. So, Max, I think your point is interesting. I think there's always that – challenge of the racial component there's always that challenge frankly and I, so it's hard not to factor that in I, I think that's um a part of it maybe um but it also so I, I pose a couple of things back to you guys number one is you're probably coaching one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever live I saw another black OC coach 
one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever live and had a job in Jacksonville and Byron Leftwich, but didn't get the right autonomy he wanted, turned it down, right, to a degree. So it's like you're like, all right, well, he got an opportunity, and, but it didn't fit how he wanted to do it, so he turned it down. So I'm like, ah, well, that's D'Amico Ryan. Other guys have been getting jobs here and there. Like, why? There's something that feels different. Or could it be, frankly, if you're Eric Bieniemy and you're looking at these jobs like Houston Key, and what's the first thing we always say when we hear guys like David McCulley? Well, these jobs come up, but you, you kind of have to take it. You have to take it. Or if you're Eric Bieniemy, do you have to take one of those jobs? If you're seeing Andy Reid potentially retire in a couple yeah, of years? Yeah, you got to take one, Jay. Do you? Or if you're like, maybe I just want to sit here. Maybe I want the job. If they're offering. At some point. If, yeah, I hear. Or, keep... maybe, or maybe they want, maybe he wants, maybe I could have one of these jobs, but this job doesn't set me up for success the way this job. But they're could. not, they're not offering him the job to turn it down. They're not offering it to him. No, I, I hear. At all. So he I, ain't even getting offered the job to be able to say, you know what, I'm pulling my name out of the hat. This isn't Dan Quinn, which says, you know what, I'm taking my name out of the hat before they even finish. You know, this isn't one of those situations. He's not even getting the opportunity to turn it down. That is the frustrating part. So when you say, well, maybe he sits tight and he waits on Andy Reid, that's not the case because Andy Reid says, hey, if Eric goes and, and, and gets another opportunity where he can call it full time to show these people that he is the guy that's calling it all the time, then that's a different situation. But yeah, that's I, not the I, case. I, I, I just don't even understand, like, why – like the, I would be infuriated if I had to make a lateral move to prove to people that I actually have the what? ability to do this that, when I'm doing it every day with the, one that, of the greatest quarterbacks who ever lived who also says that I'm one of the best to do it. But he, here's what I would say to that. You don't have to be a coordinator to get a damn job, okay? We, we're going to have a great man on our show. Yeah, Joe Judge. Joe Jones got a job. Exactly. We're going to have a great man on our show in a little bit in Herm Edwards who got two jobs, two, as head coaches in the NFL. What? And then another college job. It never was a coordinator. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.